Good afternoon, Sylvania Baptist Church. Uh, it is Wednesday, April the 1st of 2020, and we are still doing videos of services online due to the fact that we've been quarantined uh, because of the COVID-19 virus. I hope this video finds you doing well, and uh, I hope that uh, you are keeping your eyes focused upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This afternoon, I wanted to uh, share with you Psalm 33. Uh, just a few verses from Psalm 33. Um, as I was reading it, I thought about uh, wait upon the Lord. We are instructed many times throughout Scripture to wait upon the Lord. In Psalm 33, verses 18 through 22, and I won't take time to read the whole chapter, but it says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul hath waited for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we wait for thee. This afternoon, I just want to talk about waiting on the Lord. Uh, during this time that we're in, we have a lot of... Uh, additional time, I guess you could say, at home and with family and, and uh, hopefully for Bible study and prayer. And uh, we need to think about waiting on the Lord because sometimes we get ahead, ahead of God and we try to do things on our own instead of just uh, listening and waiting for him to do what he needs to do. In verses uh, 13 through 15, I want to kind of give you a, a little background before I move into verses uh, 16 through 22. But um, in verses 13 through 15, we need to understand something, and that is that the Lord sees everyone, uh, every moment of every day. Uh, Psalm 33, uh, 13 through 15 says, the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men uh, from his dwelling place. He looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He he who fashions the hearts of them all, he who understands all their works. Uh, God witnesses everything that happens here on this earth. God's eyes are upon his people and therefore our eyes should be upon him. Uh, when we think about um, that, in waiting upon God and looking for God, looking up to him, our gaze meets the gaze of God looking back at us. What a wonderful thought to think of the simple fact that whenever we look to God, God is already looking at us and our gazes meet. Uh, th this is blessedness. Uh, it, it's the blessedness of waiting upon God because we know that he is looking he takes our eyes and our thoughts away from ourselves, even our needs and our desires, and he fills us with the thoughts of our God when we wait on him and look to him. We worship him uh, in his glory and his love. Uh, with his all-seeing eye watching over us, and he supplies our every need. So he knows everything that's happening here on this earth. Not only that, but he uh, observes all who live here on this earth. Uh, matter of fact, Scripture says that the uh, eye of the Lord is on them that fear him, on them that f uh, hope in his mercy. Uh, I hope that you would let the exercise of waiting uh, become a habit. And that habit of waiting on God, I pray that, you would be consumed by the abounding hope, uh, a hope as bright and boundless as God's mercy. Uh, the kindness of God is such that in whatever state we come to him, we may confidently hope in his mercy. Uh, such are God's waiting ones. And, and now think of uh, the God in whom we wait it says, the eye of the Lord is on them that fear him, on them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. 
not it's not to prevent danger of death or famine. Uh, uh, this is often needed. God uses uh, death and famine sometimes to uh, stir us uh, into waiting on Him. Um, but the main issue is not to stir us, but to deliver us and, and to keep us alive uh, because our dangers are very real and very dark to us. The situations are sometimes awful. They might be temporal uh, things of this world or that might, might be spiritual things. Uh, and they may sometimes utter be appear to be utterly hopeless. However, there's always one hope and that is that God's eye is on us. That eye sees the danger and sees the need that we have and uh, in tender love, uh, he takes his trembling, waiting child and sees the moment when our harp is right and then he blesses us. And he sees the way in which that blessing is to come even when we don't. Uh, this, this living, mighty God that we serve, we, we need to fear him. And then we need to hope in his mercy. And we need to humbly but boldly say, our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Let thy mercy be upon us, O Lord, according as we wait for thee. Church, we all praise the Lord for his omniscience because he knows everything. Uh, he knows everything that occurs on earth. Uh, he knows everything that occurs in heaven. He... And in doing that, he keeps his eye upon us because he cares deeply for you and me. He loves you and me. We are so important to God that he even numbers the hairs on our heads, according to Matthew uh, chapter 10. Not, not only that, but those numbers, when I got to thinking about that this morning even, uh, those number of hairs change every day we lose hair and new hair growth comes in, but yet God knows the number of the hairs on our head right now. That That's just pretty amazing that he cares about us that much. Uh, you know, what I find is often we have a tendency to, and we're tempted to think that God is up in heaven and he's far, far away and that he's unconcerned with what is happening in our lives and nothing could be further from the truth than that. He knows everything about us. Our Heavenly Father knows our needs, and he invites us to carry our worries to him in prayer. And a matter of fact, in Matthew and Philippians and First Peter, he tells us to cast all our cares upon him. Not only that, but we find in verse 15 that God creates our hearts, and he, he considers everything they do. Uh not only does the Lord observe our actions, but he also examines our hearts. And it's th this is kind of like uh, how a potter molds the clay. God fashioned and shaped our hearts, and he alone understands them. In fact, scripture teaches that we are incapable of fully understanding our hearts. Uh, as the Lord judges our works, he also judges our hearts. Uh, we must give an account to God not only for our words and our deeds, but also for our passions and our intentions of our hearts, because he considers everything that they do. Uh, the all-seeing eye of God should motiva motivate us to holy living. When nobody else is watching, God is. Now, you may hide your sin. We may hide our sin from our parents, from our spouses, our employers, our teachers, our spiritual leaders, but one thing is for sure, and we cannot hire our sin from God. We should live all, every moment of our lives in the full awareness that God is looking on. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, on verses 16 through 22, uh, the Lord delivers all who fear him. Uh, the psalmist calls uh, the 
the righteous to praise the Lord because he delivers those who trust in him. When we fear him, uh, he shields us through all troubles and attacks and from every enemy. Uh, something we have to note in this passage is that it says that God does not deliver us because of our armies or our powers or our resources. Uh, the psalmist acknowledges something that kind of should be an encouraging fact to us all. Uh, and victory does not belong to the biggest and the strongest. Uh, the size of the army does not guarantee victory in battle and a warrior's physical strength is no guarantee that he will prevail. Uh, David was young and unimpressive in his statue. However, he was uh, a mighty warrior. Uh, he slew Goliath and scores of others through the power of God. So we find that God did not care about his stature. What he cared about was his heart. And David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, matter of fact, that's what scripture says. He watches over all who fear and place their hope in his love. Uh, the all-seeing eyes of the Lord, not weapons and not human strength, are the security of those who fear him. Uh, God's mercy and unfailing love, rather than our own resources, cause us to hope or take confidence. He delivered us when death threatens. He carries us safely through the troubles of life, such as uh, famine and COVID-19. Our faithful God is our help and our shield, our aid and our protector, uh, even in the conflicts of life. He will be victorious. Uh, he said, uh, don't be afraid. I've overcome the world. And, and he has. Uh, the anthem of praise we see here in verses 18 through 22 uh, concludes with a prayer. And it asks for the Lord's mercy or unfailing love to continue to protect and deliver his people in verse 22. We hope in him and him alone when, he, uh, when life's troubles surround us. Hope not only means to trust or take confidence in, it also means to wait expectantly on a truth. Hope, as we've said before, is not the hope that we think about, like maybe something's gonna happen, but it, it is waiting expectantly on a truth, not, not a false lie, but a truth. When overwhelming circumstances confront us, the faithfulness and steadfast love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, gives us peace. So folks, we need to, need to wait on him. Uh, when you think about this passage, uh, the, the application where we need to apply it is, is clearly stated. It says our souls wait for the Lord. Uh, when the enemy attacks or when life's troubles assault us, uh, we shouldn't turn to our own resources, but we should turn to the Lord. Uh, too often we take matters into our own hands and, and rather than placing uh, our focus upon God, we try to do it. And when we try to do it, I don't know about you, but man, it brings frustration and fear and worry when I can't make it happen. But then I find that if I'll just let go and let God then what I find is I'm in peace. I have a confidence through the storms of life that my God rules and reigns and that he will take care of the situation. Uh, therefore, I think we must be careful to always trust in God and not ourselves and what we have. Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And then in Psalms 20 and verse 7, it says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I pray that during these troublesome times that we're in, 
you will continue to study, continue to read God's word, continue to pray, and most of all, that you will be willing to wait upon God and let him do that which only he can do in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for Psalms 33. Lord, we thank you for the hope of knowing that you are watching over us. You know our every trouble, our every trial. And Lord, we know that you're victorious over them. So Father, tonight, we just place our trust in you and we wait upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.